right? So now what we're getting into is how do we determine which is a strong acid and which is a weak acid? All right, so what are different ways to handle it? Okay, so let's say, for example, if you have HCl and HBr. So how do I know which is a stronger acid? Is it HCl or HBr, right? So for that, we have different set of effects. So we have to narrow it down to one effect and find out what effect is playing the role, okay? So here you have a hydrogen, that's your acid, right? So anything with a proton is an acid. So what's your acid here is a hydrogen. Okay, that's your hydrogen. And here it's attached to a chlorine, and in this case attached to a bromine. Okay, so it's attached to two different elements. Okay, hydrogen attached to chlorine, hydrogen attached to bromine. So this is a common thing, is your hydrogen, but it's attached to chlorine and bromine, so there are two different elements. Okay, so that's an example of element effect. Okay. So what happens in element effect is, if you go left to right in the periodic table, okay, or top to bottom in the periodic table, okay, acid strength increases. Okay, so acid strength increases left to right and top to bottom. So now, if you look in the periodic table, then chlorine comes on top and bromine comes on the bottom. Okay, so which is a stronger acid now? It's easy to find out. This is a stronger acid, so HBr is stronger. Okay, now in this case, there is always going to be a comparison, okay, with HCl with HBr or something else, but there has to be comparison. You cannot just say HBr is a strong acid, all right. So if you take another example here, so if you have H2O and NH3. So H2O and NH3, which is a stronger acid here. All right. Again, you identify your acid, which is your hydrogen. So you can pick any hydrogen. You have two here, you have three. Pick any hydrogen. Right. And what the difference here is hydrogen attached to oxygen and hydrogen attached to uh, nitrogen. All right. So we are going, again, left to right in the periodic table. So you have a carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and halogen. Right. So we are going left to right. So nitrogen comes first and then comes the oxygen. So which is a stronger acid then? Water is a stronger acid. Okay, because we are going left to right in the periodic table. Okay, so element effect is a very easy effect to find out, okay? As long as you can predict what's the real difference here, okay? It's the element. So that is your element effect. Because what's playing the role here is the chlorine and bromine not the hydrogen, because that's the same in both the cases, all right? So that's your element effect. Now let's see what's gonna happen when you have inductive effect. So first of all, let's find out what is inductive effect. So what's the meaning of inductive effect, right? <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> So let's take two examples. So again, we are comparing the two examples right here. So same way we did before, right? So you have an OH and then we have, let's say, OH attached to a chlorine. So there's an extra chlorine. So you have the two carbons right here, you have the two carbons. Now, <clears throat> we're looking at inductive effect here. But let's find out if, you have any element effect here, right? So hydrogen attached to an oxygen, hydrogen attached to an oxygen. So in the, both the cases, your acid is attached to the same element, right? So oxygen and oxygen is common in both, so there's no element effect here, okay? Remember element effect when you have HCl and HBr, when hydrogen attached to two different elements, then that is element effect. But in this case, hydrogen attached to oxygen and hydrogen attached to oxygen, same in both the cases, right? So there's no element effect here. So then it is inductive. And how, why is inductive? Or what is inductive, first of all, is you have 
you have a chlorine in the structure right here. And chlorine is an electronegative element. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, all the halogens are electronegative, right? So due to the electronegativity of this chlorine, all these electrons in the bond, they're all pulled towards chlorine. So the flow of electrons is toward this side, okay? Because chlorine is more electronegative, it's pulling all the electrons in the bonds. Also, all these electrons are shifted more towards chlorine, okay? And that effect makes this bond weaker. And weaker the bond means it's easy to break off the bond, okay? Break off the easy, that means that is a stronger acid. So that can easily donate the proton in a reaction, and that makes the stronger, that, that makes the acid stronger. Okay. So inductive effect, in other words, okay, comes from the okay, electronegative atoms, okay, and that makes an acid stronger. All right. So let's say if you have another example like this. So if you're comparing A with B, right, and we're trying to find out which is a stronger acid here. Right? So again, this is, there is no element effect here because it's attached to the same element, your hydrogen, that's your acid. Okay. So the difference here now is one has two chlorines, right? So here, if you look at this carbon, it has one chlorine that has two chlorines, right? So two chlorines will have a higher inductive effect, okay, higher pulling power compared to one chlorine, okay? So that means this will be a stronger acid. Okay, again, inductive effect is all about pulling electrons toward itself, right? So pulling electron toward this side, and that makes the acid stronger, right? Uh, one more example. Let's say you have something like this. Right. And like this. So out of these two, which is a stronger acid now, right? So again, there's no element effect here because oxygen and oxygen same in both the cases, right? So the real difference here is chlorine is on carbon one, right? So if I start from here, that's your carbon one. So one, two, and three, right? And this is your carbon one, two, and three, right? So chlorine is on carbon one, and in this case, fluorine is on carbon three. Right. So chlorine is even though less electronegative compared to fluorine, the problem is here that this is closer to the acid. So closer it is, the stronger effect it will have. Right. So this is like a fireplace. Okay. If you're close to the fireplace, the more heat you will feel. And that's why this is going to be a stronger acid compared to this one. Even though fluorine is more electronegative, but it's far away from the acid. And that's why it will have a less pulling power compared to chlorine, which is closer. Right. And let's do one more example, and that's pretty much should take care of all the different variations with inductive effect. So let's say if you have, I'm just trying to keep this part same so we're not confused. So let's say you have chlorine and Right. So carbon one, let's say this, there's only one carbon here. So that's your carbon, that's your carbon. One carbon has a bromine and one carbon has a chlorine. Okay. So which is going to be a stronger acid here now? Okay. So they're on the same place. Okay. So they're on the same carbon. All right. But chlorine is more electronegative. Okay. As compared to bromine. So which will have the stronger pulling power? That will be chlorine. So that should be your stronger acid. 
Right, so that's how you find out. So inductive effect has different variations. Okay, closer it is, the stronger effect it has. Okay, if they are on the same carbon, then whichever is more retronegative will have the strong pulling power. Okay, and that will make it a stronger acid. Right. So let's move on with third effect, and that is resonance. And it's very, very easy to understand. So we are on third effect here, which is resonance. So let's compare the two examples. All right. <clears throat> so if I look at this example and this example, right, can I call it as an element effect? Okay. No, because your acid is attached to the same element here, oxygen, oxygen. So there's no element effect, right? Do we have inductive effect? Okay, inductive effect usually comes from the electronegative elements such as halogens. But since we don't have any halogen on the molecule, I can say there's no inductive effect. Okay, so what's the real difference here? Right. So you have an oxygen that has electron pair on the oxygen, right? And you have electron pair on the oxygen here. And this electron pair here is in resonance, it's conjugated. You have electron pair, single bond, double bond. So there's a conjugation, there's a resonance here. Right? But in this case, there is no resonance because we don't have a conjugation. Okay? So anytime you have a resonance, that makes an acid stronger. So that should be your stronger acid, and no resonance is going to be a weaker acid. All right? So try to find out the real difference. Okay, what discriminates this molecule and this molecule? Okay. And that is your resonance. So, and that makes the acid stronger. All right, so last effect is hybridization effect. And that is very specific, okay? So in this case, let's say we have a carbon attached to a hydrogen. Then you have a double bond carbon attached to a hydrogen and triple bond carbon attached to a hydrogen. Okay. So the difference here, again, I cannot call this as element effect because your hydrogen attached to carbon, carbon, and a carbon. Okay. I cannot say this is an inductive effect because I don't have any electronegative atom here. Okay, no halogens. Uh, there's no resonance here because I don't have a conjugation. Okay, I just have a triple bond, double bond, single bond. Okay, so difference here is what type of carbon you have. Okay, so this is sp3 carbon, right? This is sp2 carbon, and this is sp carbon. Okay, and in this case, the rule is as the s character increases, okay, so as the s character increases, Okay, acidity increases. All right. So what's the meaning of S character here? It's compared with sp3, right? So if you have 1s and 3p, how much of S percent you have? Okay. So if total is 100, then S is 25%. So S is 25%, right? So in this case, you have SP2. So 1S and 2P in total is 100. So that means S is 33%, right? So S is 33%, roughly, all right? And you have 1S and 1P. If your total is 100, then S is 50%. Okay, so S character increases. That means acidity increases. So acidity increases from left to right. That means this is a stronger acid. It's a weaker acid and it's the weakest. All right. So this is a very easy to figure out because you're just comparing with what kind of bond is that, okay, or what kind of carbon is that? Is sp2, sp, or sp3? All right. So these are the all four different effects. They play a role in 
deciding the acid strength. All right. Now the next question is, how do I find out which is a stronger base? All right. So let's say if you have an example like this. So until now, whatever we're talking about, we're talking about acid, right? Now we're gonna switch the gear completely and find out which is a stronger base. Right? So let's say if you have example like this, we have O minus, okay? And then I have so this negative charge here, and then let's say I have this. Okay. So which is a stronger base out of these two? And how do I find out, okay? Now, we don't have any set of rules for base. The only rules we have that are for the acids, okay? So the way to handle it is, can we only have rules for acids? So can I change this into an acid, first of all, all right? So if I change that into an acid, or the conjugate acid to be more specific, then it will look like this, okay? So if I change into a conjugate acid of this, it will look like this. And if I change to a conjugate acid of this, then that will be this. <clears throat> right? And now we can find out which is a stronger acid. Right? So you have the inductive effect because you have a chlorine. Okay? So this will be a stronger acid. All right? So if this is a stronger acid, then that cannot be a strong base, okay? Does that make sense to you? If, if this is a stronger acid, then it cannot be a stronger base. Then that has to be a stronger base. So you kind of reverse it. All right, so then how logically we then we find out that this is a stronger base, okay? So we always have to change them into conjugate acid and then find out applying the rules of acids because we only have rules for acid, okay? Once you find out which is a stronger acid, then that cannot be a strong base. Then it has to be a weaker base and then other one has to be a stronger base then. All right, so let's do one more example. All right, so which is a stronger base out of these two? All right. Again, we don't know how to handle bases. So the first thing is to change it into conjugate acids, right? So what's the conjugate acid for this? We just have to put a hydrogen next to the carbon, right? So that's the conjugate acid for this, and this will be this, right? And then you find out, so which is a stronger acid out of these two? So what effect is playing the role here? H is attached to a carbon and H is attached to a nitrogen. That means that is element effect. Okay. So if you go by element effect, then left to right increases. So carbon is on the left, nitrogen is on the right. So this will be a stronger acid. Okay, so if it's a stronger acid, then it cannot be a strong base. Then this has to be a strong base. Okay, so that's how we find out. So we reverse it. All right. 